that will see God. It was these men who carried the weight of God's presence that seen God. Listen, dads. Listen, grandpas. If you want to see God move in your family, it's going to be work. And you're going to have to carry the weight of God's presence being where you're at and seeing your family inherit the promises of God. It's going to be praying when others are playing. It's going to be being in the Word of God and knowing God's Word when others are worried about other statistics. It's going to be about a, a, a crucifying this carnal flesh and allowing the Spirit of God to live in us. You know, the mandate of this world is live any way that you want to live. God says that's not the way that we are to live. But having God's presence, there is a high cost to holy living. There is a price that, that, that is costly to be paid to feeling the presence of God. As I think about that, I think about sometimes that there will be tears that will be given over sin. There will be tears that will be given over lukewarmness. There will be tears given over lost opportunities and over backsliders. There was a weight of the cross. You see, I just want you to think about something for a moment. Here we have these men. They're standing there and they're holding the Ark of the Covenant. Now I want you to think about something for a moment. Here they are, they're holding up to 500 pounds. The weight is getting heavy. The day is growing long as men and women are walking by. But I want you to think about something. They were probably more mesmerized by the waters being high and standing still. They were probably more worried about getting to the other side than what they even thought about these men that are there holding the stage and the Ark of the Covenant so that they can cross in safety. There may be times where the children don't understand. There may be times where others don't understand, but there is one thing that is necessary is that we hold standards of godliness and righteousness. Even when others don't understand, we bridge the gap so they can experience the presence of God. Your children may not understand. You know, for me, when I was a child, it wasn't a question, will we be in church? We were in church. Mom and Dad knew that we were there. I knew that we were there. And sometimes maybe I was in the pew, not even aware of what was going on, but they knew that if I was there, amen, that their commitment someday would pay off. Amen. It has. Brother and sister, being faithful to, to the things of God. Uh, my parents, there were times where my friends from school would come over. They'd say, hey, can you go out with us? Dad said, no, you're not going with that crowd. Man, I got mad. I didn't like it. I wanted to fit in just like everybody. But I'm glad now for the stand that took. Sometimes there may be times where you stand, children don't understand and others don't understand. But you stand holy the ways of righteousness and godliness. Why do we pray? Why do we know God's Word? Why do we strive to live a life that's holy? Because it leads to the promises that God has for you and I. And so that's sometimes the weight does get heavy. And sometimes it can be weary and even discouraging. But I want to tell you, there's coming a day of great joy. Imagine what those priests felt like when the last foot had stepped upon the ground and they made their way to the other side of the bank and God once again showed Himself to be God. Listen, be faithful under the weight of the ark. But there's something else and I need to close around with but there's some two other things I want to look at this morning, and that is the strength of the priest. The Bible says this in verse 17, and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. It indicates that their strength came because they knew they were doing what's right. And they endured because they knew that endurance they would find God moving. I look here and I begin to notice that they simply had confidence in God. 
Now imagine, I'm sure that there were others that were hurrying across as they see the water brother out piling up and they thought, how much longer can this water keep piling up like this? Maybe it began to heap and heap and heap and heap and heap. They saw it get higher and higher and they were rushing across. But here were these men and they weren't anxious about anything because they stood firm there in the Jordan. They held the Ark of the Covenant. They said, listen, our confidence is not in ourselves, but our confidence is in God. And though the water keeps heaping and heaping, Amen. God will keep us. Amen, brother and sister. What makes successful fathers? Amen. It's knowing that their confidence is in God. Amen. God's able to keep that little child in a world that's full of corruption. God's able to save that child. God's able to use that child. Amen. Dad, keep being a dad that stands firm upon the Word of God and the promises of God and the principles of God. The Word has all kinds of things to say. You know, it sounds in my heart. It saddens my heart when I see young people that they're bound by drugs. Just teenagers are bound by drugs. It grieves my heart when I see a teenage pregnancy. It grieves me. It grieves my heart when I hear about young people going out and having their parties and their immoralities. It, it grieves me. And it grieves me when parents say, well, well, we've done the best we can. We, we can't, you know, that's just the way it is. No. You better get on a firm foundation upon God's words and God's principles and stand firm and have your confidence in God that God is able to keep this child. God is able to keep this grandchild. God is greater. There are promises on the other side for this child. Amen. Brother and sister, stand firm as parents, as grandparents. Amen. The third thing that I want to look at is don't underestimate your strength and your influence. Here were these men and they stood firm. They carried the weight of the ark. They stood firm. But they didn't underestimate their influence. They stood up for what was right. Listen, don't underestimate your influence. God still wants holy people. God still wants a generation that knows salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. God still wants a generation that knows the power of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. God still wants a generation that knows a separation. Amen. Holy living unto God. Amen. Don't be afraid. Amen. Of moms and dads. Dads in particular this morning to fulfill your role and stand firm. Don't underestimate your influence. I can tell you that now as a man I can understand my dad's, my dad's stance greater now than what I did back then. He had a great influence on me. The way that I think and the way that I do things even today is still because of my dad's influence. And there may be days that were mundane and maybe there were days that it was even frustrating. But those days paid off because that influence was great on me. If we could backtrack into the history of 1830 to 1840, you would find that there were ten men that were given the challenge of taking care of thousands of miles of land. They were given simply a horse and a saddle and a change of clothes, a handgun and a rifle, and they had little pay, but they were asked if they would do their very best to protect thousands of miles of land from the enemies and the, uh, from the enemy of the Indian the Indians attack. You'll find that they're in the middle of outlaws and in the middle of corruption, that these ten men made a difference. And today we know them by a very large group known as the Texas Rangers. Because they made a difference. They didn't get weary, but they stood firm with what they had. I'm going to tell you something, guys. Stand firm with what you have. It's not about having the biggest bank account. It's not about having the fanciest home. It's not even about having the greatest means to give to your child. It's about giving yourself and giving it all to them and standing firm. The enemy, he's out for the souls of your lives. He doesn't work any differently in our culture than what he does in the Muslim culture on the foreign ground. Where we've seen in previous weeks children crying out hateful things. Listen, 
The devil wants to put hate in the minds and hearts of children, but God wants to put love and freedom. The enemy wants to destroy their life, but God wants to give them life and life more abundantly. I think it's important that we realize that God has promises for you and I. Promises. Promises from generation to generation. David Frum, one of George W. Bush's speechwriters, he wrote a book and he talked about how they felt at 9 11. He said that after 9 11 happened, he said he was just different. He said that evening he went home and he began to think about the Pentagon. And he didn't just think about the Pentagon being the United States of America, but he thought, that's my thing. He thought about the devastation that took place in the Twin Towers. He didn't just think about the Twin Towers being in New York City, but he thought about those are my Twin Towers. He thought about the U.S. airlines and how that they fly and often we don't think about them, but he thought those are my airplanes and airlines. He said that in the middle of that, he began to do something. He got his wife and his children and he grabbed them and put his arm around them and in every voice, he said, this is my life. And this is my children. And this is my family. I think that just as the priests did, they led their way. When the waters were swelling over, they stepped in. When the waters stood high, they did not become fearful, but they stood firm. When the weight got heavy, they said, I'll carry the weight because these are my people, which is God's people. And I want them to inherit the promises of God. Would you stand this morning? I want us to do something in closing. I want us to think about those of here in the church. Listen, I love these people. And I believe that you do too as you look around and you see individuals that we worship. Listen, these are God's people. And these are my people. I want to see great things done. I want to, in the middle of turbulent times, brother, I want to step out of faith and see God hold back from the for people that they can go across with the promises. Listen, in the middle of turbulent times, I want to be a man of God that is willing to stand. And though it is sometimes a strong, uh, a difficult pressure, a difficult job to do, I want to hold the presence of God firm and stand firmly. And though, you know, maybe there are little children that don't even understand sometimes what Brother Seville's preaching or praying about or anticipating God's saying, I still want to stand because one day they're going to inherit the promises of God and they're going to understand why Brother Seville stood under the weight of holding the presence of God and, 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 and the pressures. I want them to see that because they inherit the promises of God. Listen, parents, your children need you. They need you more than a paycheck. They need you more than just a body in the house. They need your presence. They need your time. They need your God the character. See, one day you're going to blink your eyes and those babies are going to be grown if the Lord should tear it. They're going to be out there in a world that's difficult, but the foundation that you gave them will help them inherit the promises of God. That God is with them. He'll never leave them nor forsake them. That God has a better way than living in a world without hope and loss. In a world that, that is so mesmerized by, by, by the God of this world. And there's something more. You've given them God. You've given them the hope of, of a godly life. You've given them the presence of the Holy Ghost. You've given them the power of God. You've given them a life that's separate to this world. And that they can hold to and cling to and claim the promises of God. But it starts by stepping off the turbulence and holding, holding on to the presence of God, even when it's difficult.
even when they don't understand, knowing that by faith you're trusting God. He's going to get everything together. And He's going to take care of you. This morning, if you want to influence other lives in a godly way, if you want to be like one of these priests that stepped out in faith and held the presence of God so that others could receive the promise,